Dear Heavenly Father, we ask for your presence, your Holy Spirit with us. I ask your help in uh, my presentation here this morning. Give thanks for another day of life and pray your Holy Spirit work in our hearts and guide us in the way of truth. Father, I just pray that uh, those watching can be uh, attentive to the study and take note of things and if there's anything I'm doing in error that they can correct me and those in this here room also, Father, as I, I, um, I seek to be seeking, speaking that which is uh, truth, Father, that is light into the future events, Father, and um, ask your blessing and help in doing this and seeking that way. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Uh, so today's presentation I've entitled uh, Foreshadowings. Foreshadowings is really another name for typology. Um, an event would occur where it would give an indication of what's going to happen in another event in the future. And um, I'm really focusing on uh, Ezekiel again uh, with the 300 and 90 days and 40 days where he lies on his left side and right side and how that is not just pointing to the, the events of 586 BC and the destruction of Jerusalem in that year on the 10th day of the 5th month but also um, there is a foreshadowing of what's going to happen in Jerusalem in AD 70 uh, 655 years later and then there's other potential foreshadowings that it is uh, typifying um, we know that Ellen White says in, it's not in your notes this, I added this here later but she says in Great Controversy page uh, 25.4 she says speaking about uh, Jesus' sermon or uh, discourse on the Mount of Olives uh, just uh, a few days before the cross and he talks about this in Matthew 24 uh, Elmite says the prophecy which he uttered was twofold in its meaning while foreshadowing the destruction of Jerusalem it prefigured also the terrors of the last great day and when we can tie that in the destruction of Jerusalem in AD 70 is speaking about uh, the end of the world to the Sunday Law period and even the, the period of the seven last plagues. I have uh, drawn a line that is illustrating this foreshadowing of Ezekiel. This is, my, uh, this is where I'm, I'm placing Ezekiel here in 592 BC. And these, not just pointing to the siege in 587. Uh, he's pointing to the 10th the day of the 5th month in 586, which connects to the 10th day of the 5th month in 8070. And we can even see, if we connect this here with an end of a church, we can even see it being typified in the death of James White on the 10th day of the 5th month in 1881. So not maybe a clear illustration, but it's something I've just realized uh, in the last few days. It could even typify that for um, James White being like the leadership of the church and uh, like the death of that, of that church, in a sense, being typified. And it's also, we've connected uh, this 391 years from 977 BC to 586, um, connected with the 391 of Josiah Lecce's prophecy, and it takes us to the 10th day of the 5th month, uh, when we line up the two 391s and add 180 years, typifying the, the six months here, it takes us to the 10th day of the 5th month, so we can say Ezekiel's pointing to this date, and then Ellen White, she's, I just read a quote where she's uh, connecting AD 70 uh, to the, the seven last plagues time period uh, between the close of probation and the second advent. And I have that in your notes, it's in Desire of Ages, uh, page 36, paragraph 2. I'll just read that. She says, The Saviour's prophecy 
concerning the visitation of judgments upon Jerusalem is to have another fulfillment of which that terrible desolation was but a faint shadow. In the fate of the chosen city, we may behold the doom of a world that has rejected God's mercy and trampled upon his law. Dark are the records of human misery that earth has witnessed during its long centuries of crime. The heart sickens and the mind grows faint in contemplation. Terrible have been the results of rejecting the authority of heaven, but a scene yet darker is presented in the revelations of the future. The records of the past, the long procession of tumults, conflicts and revolutions, the battle of the warrior with confused noise and garments rolled in blood, what are these in contrast with the terrors of that day when the straining Spirit of God shall be wholly withdrawn from the wicked, no longer to hold in check the outburst of human passion and satanic wrath. The world will then behold, as never before, the results of Satan's rule. So that's um, the prophecy the Saviour was speaking of was about the, uh, the judgment of Jerusalem in AD 70. And you can see a time when... Um, the restraining spirit of God shall be wholly withdrawn and we believe that to be the close of probation and uh, that's the seven last time plagues, seven last plagues time period. Um, so just, um, so Ezekiel, he's here in 592 and um, this is where he um, plays out the, the sage, he predicts the sage, he lies on the left side for 390 days and his right side for 40 days. And if you connect uh, the number of days, I quite like this, the way it's, it's structured, that the connection between the 390 and the 40, uh, it's uh, 40 days equates to uh, f five weeks and five days and 390 days is 55 weeks and 5 days. And so that 5 days, if we go, it's in Ezekiel 4, 6, it's a day for a year. So in a sense, that, that then 5 days is, is placing Ezekiel 5 days before the, the, protector, the prediction that he's going, so that we can connect them 5 days. And then we have just this year time period, it's 55 weeks and then 5 weeks, connecting from 627 uh, when Josiah... King Josiah destroys the altars in uh, the northern Israel. And so that connects to there. And then it's the 55, it's 55 weeks in a day for a year. Time period is 385 years. And it takes us to 587. So Ezekiel in uh, chapter 20, verse 1, is going to give us the 10th day of the fifth month. And so his prophecy is also uh, pr prophesying for the sage and also prophesying for the 15th, for the, for 586 BC. And we, if we can, can turn to Ezekiel 20. And we'll just read verse says, And it came to pass in the seventh year, in the fifth month, the tenth day of the month, that certain elders of Israel came to inquire of the Lord and sat before me. So this is actually four years before the destruction of Jerusalem in 586. And he goes on to discuss that destruction. If you turn to chapter 21, and we'll read verses 1 to 3. says, And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, set thy face towards Jerusalem, and drop thy word towards the holy places, and prophesy against the land of Israel. And say to the land of Israel, Thus saith the Lord, Behold, I am against thee, and will draw forth my sword out of his sheath, and will cut off 
from thee the righteous and the wicked. So he's prophesying that there's going to be a sword against Israel. And in verses 25 and 27... He goes on to say, And thou profane, wicked prince of Israel, whose day is come when iniquity shall have an end, thus saith the Lord God, Remove the diadem, diadem and take off the crown. This shall not be the same. Exalt him that is low, and abase him that is high. I will overturn, overturn, overturn it, and it shall be no more until he, who, until he come who, whose right it is and I will give it to him. So we understand that the di removing of the diadem is uh, the taking off the crown of King Zedekiah, and this occurs uh, in 586 um, BC, and beginning on around sometimes around the time of the destruction of the temple in the tenth day of the fifth month of that year. Some we probably a few uh, a month or so later. Are you making a distinction between the destruction of Jerusalem and the destruction of the temple? Well, um, I suppose that we could. I'm not really being that distinctive. No, I'm just kind of. Well, yeah, yeah. I'm sort of connecting the two, the two events. <coughs> So um, there's a, another evidence that connects the destruction of the temple in uh, 586 on the 10th day of the 5th month with the destruction of the temple in AD 70 with it on the 10th day of the 5th month. There's, uh, so the length there is the 10th day of the 5th month that kind of connects them to dates. But there is another link that I would like to just uh, talk about as well. And um, Ezekiel in chapter 1 verse 1 references um, Jeho Jehoiachin. So I think it's in verse 2. It says, In the fifth day of the month, which was the fifth year of King Jehoiachin, Jehoiachin's captivity. So I, I had said about thinking up um, five days to the, that came from the, the calculating of the weeks. Uh, and it connects back to Jehoiachin. It's his fifth year. So his fifth year, uh, if Ezekiel's here, uh, Jehoiachin's fifth year would be in 597 BC. And I have uh, wrote that here. And it's, uh, this is, there's a, a siege of Babylon in this here year. If you turn to 2 Kings chapter 24. And starting from verse 8. Jehoiachin was 18 years old when he began to reign, and he reigned in Jerusalem three months. And his mother's name was Nehushta. Okay, and I'll just move on. And he said, and he did that which was evil in, in the sight of the Lord, according to all that his father had done. At that time, the servants of Nebuchadnezzar king of Babylon came up against Jerusalem and the city was besieged and Jerusalem the king of Babylon came against the city and the servants did besiege it and Jehoiachin the king of Judah went out to the king of Babylon he and his mother and his servants and his princes and his officers and the king of Babylon took him in the eighth year of his reign <clears throat> so we have a, a siege in 597 BC and Jehoiachin is going to be taken to Babylon, as the verse says um, there. And it's from that there date, you can then calculate to the, the siege and destruction of the temple in Jerusalem in AD 70. And the, by the, this is by Rome this time. 
It's 666 years. I can also see this here, 666 years typified by the number uh, 36 or symbolized by the number 36. Uh, there is in uh, your notes there. Can, can I ask something before you go there? Yes. When, when he's taken captive, it's in the eighth year of his reign as king. But in Ezekiel 1-2, it's talking about him already being captive five years later. Is that what it's saying? Am I understanding that correctly? He only, says, reigns, he only reigns three months. Okay, but, he, he's, he's but, he, but in Ezekiel 1-2, he's been in, in Babylon for five years as, yes. after he's captured. Yes. Okay. All right. So, Why is it saying the eighth year of his reign? in verse 12 of 2 Kings 24, if he only reigned three months. Mm -hmm. That's the eighth year. Is that not the eighth year of uh, Nebuchadnezzar? Okay. That's the good answer. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, uh, Sorry. No, that's fine. Uh, the 36 years that, uh, we'll just, um, just, we'll look at the, the, these 36 years that Jehoiachin is in um, captivity. Um, go to Jeremiah 52, verse 31. Just the end of Jeremiah. It says, And it came to pass in the seven and thirtieth year of the captivity of Jehoiachin, king of Judah, in the twelfth month, in the fifth and twentieth day of the month, that evil Merodach, king of Babylon, in the first year of his reign, lifted up the head of Jehoiachin, king of Judah, and brought him forth out of prison. So it's the thirty-seventh year of his reign. And so we have like a 36-year period here marked at the beginning of this, 666. And we can also see a 36-year period at the end of it, from AD 34 when the stoning of Stephen occurred. And uh, Jesus stood up and when uh, Stephen saw him, it was signalizing, signaling the close of probation for Israel. There's another 36-year period uh, before the destruction of the temple in uh, AD 70 and I uh, have uh, in that there your paper there you can see what is called a Babylonian magic square uh, are you in verse 31 are you taking note that it's the 12th month and the 25th day December yes. 25th yes I'll, I'll get on to that okay. as well as well all right okay <laughs> so you can see that um, there's uh, 36 numbers involved in this Babylonian square and each, there's six rows and six columns and each column and each row adds up to 111 and so being six of them uh, come to 666 um, yes mm -hmm. yeah so uh, we also see that the each each end. Well, I've, I've put here the, the curses of Leviticus 26, and the blessings and curses. The sage is, is referencing the 2520, or the seven times, which is the third seven times, which applies to Jehoiachin. Um, but if you go on the fourth. Um, uh, seven times in Leviticus 26 is speaking more about the, uh, what happens here in 586 and the destruction that occurred in the, during the, by Nebuchadnezzar in Babylon. And in the blessings and curses in Deuteronomy uh, chapter 28, it has more of an application for describing the events which occurred during the siege and destruction of the temple in AD 70. 
So there's other Bible passages which uh, can connect to the, certainly to, to these here, two time periods. Um, so I found out recently that the AD 70 and the 10th day of the 5th month was in the Nigelian date this year. It was the 6th of August. So we're sort of been seeing the sixth of August, um, and with the with what happened with Hiroshima, and um, James White also died on the sixth of August, which was the tenth day of the fifth month. <clears throat> this year, date was the twenty sixth day of the fourth month, uh, which ties in to the dates what we've talked about of the the first and second woes. So this here, Ezekiel, he's pointing forward, and we come to another time period where there's another 391 years, this time with uh, half a month connected to it, and we've connected that then, joined them two prophecies together, and we've identified the 18th of July 2020 as a date that connects both the 26th day of the fourth month in the Gregorian date and the 10th day of the fifth month in the Julian date. And... Uh, I've lined at this, we can, we can see that in, in Matthew chapter 20, it discusses about the, the third hour, and then it groups together the sixth hour and the ninth hour, as to be in one period. And then, well, we sort of, like they're kind of linked in that, in that chapter, and then we see the eleventh hour, there's, there's the eleventh hour workers, so we can there, therefore See, if this is the Sunday law period and then 11th hour workers are occurring, we can then see the, this here 69 being a symbol of, for the midnight cry time period. And uh, there's three hours in that time period. And uh, I had a look at uh, these here four last kings of, um, of Judah. Jehoiahaz, Jehoiakim, Jehoiachin, and Zedekiah, and we, we associate the midnight cry with the doubling, so we have the sixth hour and the ninth hour, and also in this here time period of these here four last kings of Judah, there's a, like a doubling as well, there's a period where Jehoiacha, Jehoiahaz reigns for three months, and Jehoiakim for 11 years, and then there's another period where Jehoiachin reigns for three months, and Zedekiah for 11 years. Uh, I have that. If you turn to the back of your your notes there, um, we can see that the three months for Jehoiahaz, you find that in 2 Kings 23, verse 31. Jehoiahaz was 20 and 3 years old when he began to reign, and he reigned three months in Jerusalem. And then the 11 years connected with uh, comes, off, comes after that, you can find in Jeremiah, Chapter 23, verse 36. Jehoiakim was 20 and 5 years old when he began to reign. And he reigned 11 years in Jerusalem. And there's uh, Chronicles. You find that in 2 Chronicles 36, verse 5 as well. And then the three months for Jehoiachin. You find that in 2 Kings chapter 24, verse 8. Jehoiachin was 18 years old when he began to reign. And he reigned in Jerusalem three months. And in Jeremiah 52, verse 1, Zedekiah was 21 and 20 years old, and he began to reign, and he reigned 11 years in Jerusalem. So we see there, with each of these uh, kings, a three-month period, an 11-year, a three-month period, an 11-year, so it's like a type of doubling. If you, uh, you add them years together, we could have that uh, as 22 years and 6 months, or we could write it as 22.5 years. And uh, if we divide the four kings of, of um, as to, if we've got that, that, that period there, if we're going to divide them, four kings, into this year, 22 and a half year period, it comes to each having equally. Uh, if they were going to have equal years, it would be 5.625 years, which equates to five years 
and uh, if you're using a 365 day year, uh, you multiply this here um, decimal, uh, you find it that it equates to five years, 228, 228 days, and three hours. And in the year um, 2020, which is a leap year, we find that the 28th day, 228th day of 20, the year 2020 is the 15th of August. So we can even see, because of this here doubling, we can even connect these four last kings to the to a midnight cry, um, connect them to the midnight cry, and um, of the, the, connecting it with the 15th of August, which was the Exeter camp meeting in 1844. Um, the three hours is, is 28, 28 days and three hours, and we also have identified uh, the sixth and the ninth hour being connected with the midnight cry, and there also you have three hours. And um, if you have that 22 and a half year period, and from 586 go back 22 and a half years. It uh, will take you to 608. Um, but these here years, they're actually, these are the, the, as like a, a symbol that the Bible gives. They, they give, just give you 11 years. There's actually 11 years and so many months. These here kings actually reign. So they would actually go back a bit further. But as a symbol, we, we can have 608 BC. And uh, this would be the, the Je Jehoiahaz, he preceded uh, King Josiah. So King Josiah would then have be, he's actually, if you look at it in the Wikipedia and other, histor other his histories, I will give you 609. Uh, so it's, um, it's actually from 977 BC to 608, it's uh, 369 years. And if you want it to make it to 609, you could, you could have that as being the 369th year, depending how you count it. So you, 609 will still work as well for as a bringing up, making it a number 369. And we've came across with um, uh, this, here, this here time period of uh, there's the, the Matthew tw chapter 20, there's here three and then a six and a nine as well. I think I have it here as well. Yeah, I have it here. Anyway. Three, six, nine. So I'm just finding a lot of the, lots of these here. Three, six, nines. And uh, maybe making it like a symbol, being 369 years. <clears throat> and then, so this would be to 608. And then you would have the 370th year. And uh, if you're going to line that uh, up with... Uh, Josiah, King Josiah's death. You have in this here time period the King of the North and the King of the South uh, coming. The King of the South, Pharaoh Necho, is coming from Egypt, and uh, King Josiah confronts him. And um, there's a battle at Megiddo, and Josiah he's killed by archers. So this is around the time period where the towards the end where uh, Egypt is going to be dominated by Babylon. It's going to be a victory of the King of the North to the King of the South. There's a battle around that time period called Kargamish. So we can connect that battle around this year time period. Um, so that's a battle with, with the King of the North and the King of the South, which we can connect with the United States and, and uh, the Soviet Union or Russia. And also we have um, Josiah's being killed by archers. So at that there, we can plug in um, an attack of Islam in that there time period as well. And so this here would be then the, the 370th year. And as Elder Jeff uh, said, that it was after uh, 36 years, and it was this 37th year that Jehoiachin was then um, released from his, his prison by the, the king of Babylon and it was on the 25th day of the 12th month and so that there 37th year of Jehoiachin lines up 
connects with this here would be the 370th year after the 369. And this, you have the cross as well, the third hour, the sixth hour, and the ninth hour. And we connected that with 9-11, July 18, and the 25th of December, lining up there. So I had a few ideas about this here, 69 as well. Uh, 69 AD is followed by 70 AD. This would be uh, symbolizing, this would be like the midnight cry symbolizing the midnight cry, and this would be like the the close of probation for the Seventh day Adventist church. And then you would have the message to the Nethernims and the Sunday law time period symbolized by the year AD 70. Or you could even connect the 69 weeks on the 70th week. Um, this would be when Jesus would be baptized and uh, Jesus would then do a work of ministry. It would be internal at, at the time of Israel. But I'm thinking that if this is the midnight cry, this is Jesus is representing the 144,000. And at the end, the end, the, 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 the end of the 69th week uh, for us, which would be um, this here, six and nine, the midnight cry, the six and nine here. Then you connect the, the 70th week with the Sabbath and the 144,000 then doing a work of ministry um, to the Nethanims. And at the end of them, 70 weeks, Michael stands up, which we can connect with, uh, um, well, Jesus stands up in, in Acts, tw Acts 7. But we connect that with Daniel 12 on and the close of probation where, um, where Michael stands up. Uh, we also have a 369 day period. Uh, if we, we look at the line of Lamech, we, like, we tied him the 777 uh, day, years that he lived with the 777 days, beginning November the 9th and going to December the, the 25th of December in, in uh, 2021. And if you add up the, the days of the years of Methuselah, he lived 187 years. And then he followed by Lamech, he lived 777 years, but he actually uh, gave birth, or no, he didn't, well, his, his, his wife gave birth to Noah. And so he, father, he became a father of Noah 182 years later. So you have like a 369-year period there, which would take you to the 9th of May, 2020. And then that's, uh, you have then a 70-year, sorry, a 70-day period to July uh, 2020. Um. So you show the same structure leading to July 18th, 2020, that you show leading to December 25th, 2021? Sort of. Yeah, it's... Um, I have to work out what what would this day mean, or I'm not saying I'm just I've noticed it. I'm just saying I've noticed this year three six nine here as well. And um, but that's an agreement with Elijah coming before July 18th, and Elijah also coming before December 25th. There's two lines there that mm -hmm. are clearly repeats mm -hmm. in the history of the midnight cry. So that's yeah. fine. Uh, so I had noticed that uh, Methuselah was born on the 6th of May, if you're on the day for a year. And um, you have Noah being born on the 9th of May. So you have like a 6-9 there as well. And from November 9 to May 9 is like as a period. It's 182 days. But if you're going to just count that as months, uh, as, as uh, six months, which we could just take as being 180 uh, symbol and symbol, and then it's followed by a 70. So you have, you have like a from the 9th of November to the 18th of July, you can have like a, a 180 and a 70. So like a one 18th of you know, 18 187 there, even though it's 252 days. And um, also notice that Theodore he plugs in 977 BC 
if you look at his uh, calendar converter, he has it as the biblical year 3069 as well, which uh, I thought was interesting. He plugs in um, this year date here, 40, 46 is beginning the creation. And so it would be um, 977 would be then the 3069th day or year of uh, since creation. I have another um, something I've seen there. Uh, if, you, if you turn to it in your notes, uh, it's, um, it's talking about the city was besieged onto the eleventh year of King Zedekiah. You, I find this here in two Kings twenty five verse two. And you find this here also, it's an identical verse. I actually went to Bible Hub website and looked at the actual Hebrew, and it's absolutely identical. There's actually just one word difference between in the King James. It says, and the city. And in Jeremiah 5, 52 verse 5, it says, so the city. But in the Hebrew, they're absolutely identical. And uh, it's so it's connecting, so the, the city was besieged unto the 11th year of King Zedekiah. <clears throat> and um, we've connected the, the King Zedekiah's, the, in that their year, the 10th day of the 5th month, uh, the city was besieged unto that year, so it's marking the end of that siege. On the 18th of July, 2020, uh, we've we know that's, that's the 10th day of, of the fifth month in the um, Julian calendar. I think, yeah, I think it's the Julian calendar. And um, we noticed that in the it's actually in, in 2 Kings 52, verse 2. So we have like a 252 here. <laughs> And uh, this year period here is a uh, then beginning at a five two five period, uh, a fifth <coughs> five hundred and twenty five day period, and you find the exact same verse in Jeremiah fifty two verse five. <coughs> so in the ver in these here, it's two five two and then a five two five, and it's speak speaking of an event on the of uh, on the tenth day of the fifth month. So I just thought that was kind of interesting. The, the verses kind of connected to that. Um, so another thing I had thought about this here being like a, at the midnight cry time period as being like a progressive uh, destruction. Uh, we see the number four, the four kings there. And the midnight cry is a period where the United States as the sixth kingdom goes down and the United Nation rises as, as the seventh kingdom. So that, that there would connect with that there. <coughs> and um, 608 to 586 would connect with Midnight Cry of the Sunday Law. Because the kingdom's going down progressively and the kingdom's rising. Mm -hmm. Yes, you could. That's what you're saying? Um, yeah, well, yeah, I suppose Babylon's, Babylon is actually uh, just defeated, it's, it's defeating Egypt around this here time period, so that's in a sense rising, um, and then it's, well, here it's, it's just conquering, defeating Israel, even though it had sub subdued it beforehand, so yeah, I haven't really thought about that, but maybe you could connect it to that. Um, so, I was going to tie in Cestius as well. We have a 1260. Um, but I haven't drawn it up on the board. I could, 
Um, I'd like to maybe think it through as well, just to, before we do it. So I, I think I'll just close there, and, um, unless there's any questions. Just close early. And nothing. Okay, shall we pray? Yes. <clears throat> Dear Heavenly Father, I just uh, give thanks for allowing me to present this morning, Father. Just forgive me for my uh, human frailties and weaknesses. And um, I pray that uh, from what I've presented this morning, that there will be other lines of truth opening up concerning these things, that other people can, can look at these their studies and maybe glean more light than maybe what I'm seeing at the moment. And uh, we ask your blessing upon us for the rest of this year day and those watching live stream. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.